Hello, friends. So I'll be talking on this uh, vitamin C, uh, whether it holds any promise now. So I'm sure many of the listeners who have been following me, I've already done two talks on this. Uh, so this particular talk will be encompassing uh, four newer trials that came in 2020 and 21, uh, mainly the ACTS trial, the vitamins trial, the oranges trial, and Victus trial. So those four was not covered in my previous talk. So I will just encompass that. And uh, we'll try to decipher whether there's any role of uh, vitamin C in sepsis at all uh, in, now in the current practice. So the topics that I would cover is the physiological rationale of using vitamin C in sepsis. And, uh, and what happens to vitamin C in sepsis, uh, whether the levels are so depleted or uh, what are the sort of levels that they maintain. And we'll look at uh, clinical studies with mortality as endpoints. So there are uh, seven randomized controlled trials uh, so, as I said, the four randomized controlled trials that have come recently are uh, sort of nail on the coffin because they have put an end to this debate on uh, whether vitamin C has any role in sepsis. And there are these two meta-analyses, which are obviously the data is skewed by those uh, earlier positive randomized controlled trials. And uh, now the question arises, now with so many good trials, we have around seven randomized trials, which have sort of put an end to this debate, do we need any future trials? Because that is a question that we need to answer ourselves because still there is a push on uh, using vitamin C and the take home message. So when you look at uh, what is the rationale of using vitamin C in sepsis, so vitamin C is a cofactor for dopamine beta hydroxylase. So it is a cofactor. And this dopamine beta hydroxylase converts dopamine to norepinephrine. So when the vitamin C levels are depleted in sepsis, which we know vitamin C levels are very depleted, uh, so there is a concomitant reduction in norepinephrine because there is a lack of cofactor that exists which converts dopamine to norepinephrine. So this is an important mechanism of action which some of the trials have shown that by using vitamin C, it has a vasopressor sparing effect because it increases the norepinephrine levels because it acts as a cofactor for dopamine beta hydroxylase. And the other ways vitamin C is shown to act is it's a free radical scavenger. It scavengers sort of free radicals. And there are certain protective elements within the cell like tetrahydrobiotin and alpha tocopherol whose levels also get depleted in sepsis. So it tends to restore this favorable sort of a molecules within the cell. So this is where my area of interest is where we are doing a study in our center. So the main pathophysiology in sepsis, which uh, now we have sort of revisited and re-emphasizing is the loss of endothelial cell integrity because of these uh, tight junctions which get sort of disrupted. So the tight junctions which tend to maintain the endothelial cell integrity uh, gets sort of disrupted when there is uh, sepsis. So the vitamin C is known to increase these tight junctions and thereby tends to maintain the vascular endothelial integrity. So, so maybe the future studies when we talk about it should focus on whether the vascular leakage can be averted by use of vitamin C because uh, some of the studies, as you would recall, they have shown that it has a vasopressor sparing effect and possibly some of it may be due to this mechanism of action by preventing vascular leakage by maintaining vascular endothelial cell integrity. And vitamin C is also known to enhance the cellular functions like macrophage function, phagocytic function and lymphocyte function. Then the question uh, the listeners would have, which we have clarified, is why vitamin C has to be given with thiamine. So the vitamin C, uh, it has shown that increased levels of vitamin C leads to oxalate crystal deposition in the kidneys. Uh, so basically, the glyoxalate gets reduced to oxalate. So we want to prevent this reduction of glyoxalate to oxalate. Uh, so we want this glyoxalate to get oxidized. And this oxidation of glyoxalate happens by glycosyl alanine transferase into carbon dioxide. Basically, we want this pathway, glyoxalate to be oxidized to form carbon dioxide. And we don't want this glyoxalate to be reduced to oxalate. For this to happen, you need good vitamin C level because the, uh, sorry, the thiamine levels, because the thiamine pyrophosphate acts as a cofactor for this oxidation pathway. For this uh, glyoxalate to be oxidized to carbon dioxide, you need thiamine pyrophosphate. That's why thiamine is given so that reduction to oxalate does not happen. So that is the sort of a hypothesis why we administer time. And time and also has favorable effect in sepsis. And there are many studies which have shown that in patients with sepsis who die or who have multi-organ failure, 
the vitamin c levels are depleted to alarmingly low levels and again this is a schematic representation that vitamin c tends to maintain your capillary integrity so these are all the studies so there are some four good studies which have shown physiologically in sepsis vitamin c body levels are very low so they are depleted to a very low levels uh, which possibly is a hypothesis and a scientific plausibility that replenishment of this vitamin c should change the outcome so that is where the but and the same rule applies to vitamin d levels also because vitamin d levels also we know is depleted but studies have shown by replacing vitamin d it has not shown any favorable influence on altering the outcome so same possible principle applies in sepsis so in sepsis we know vitamin c levels are depleted so let's talk into the studies so this was the earliest study which came in 2016 very small study where they looked at using vitamin c uh, versus placebo 14 patients where they got 25 mg per kg 6 hourly and placebo in 14 patients and uh, they saw that vasopressor need was significantly reduced where vitamin c was used as compared to the placebo and vasopressor duration then the time for vasopressors also was significantly less in the vitamin c group as compared to the placebo group and as you see 28 day mortality also significant so a very small study maybe the earlier studies this is by iranian uh, investigators which showed that usage of high dosage of vitamin c uh, significantly reduced the mortality and the need for vasopressors and the duration of vasopressors iso length of stay there was no difference so after this then this particular study there was this uh, nathan et al which was a much earlier study so where they looked at primary endpoint was composite of patients developing pneumonia and ards so the secondary endpoints they looked at patients developing multi organ failure duration of mechanical ventilation icu length of stay and mortality these were looked at as secondary endpoints so this was a larger study 595 patients 301 in vitamin c group where they got 1000 mg 8 hourly and they were compared to placebo 294 so primary endpoint which is the composite of these patients developing ards and pneumonia as you see was not significant so this was sort of a negative trial but what the study showed is the risk of them developing multi organ failure was significantly less as you see confidence interval was significant it means the vitamin c group tended to develop less multi organ failure and ventilatory free days again uh, uh, there was no uh, huge sort of a difference between vitamin c and placebo so the positive finding in this nathan study was reduction of uh, patients with sepsis developing multi organ failure so this is a graphical representation that multi organ failure was significantly less in the group which got vitamin c but here they looked at secondary endpoints and as you see they looked at 28 day mortality icu mortality and hospital none of them was statistically significant but you could see there was some signal suggesting that there was a reduction there was a signal towards developing reduction in 28 day ic mortality icu mortality in hospital like 2.4 versus 1.3 2.1 but none of them were statistically significant in secondary endpoints only multi organ failure attained statistical significance after this this particular study came so this was by marik et al uh, so this is the one which created sort of sensation among lot of uh, intensivists uh, this came in 2017 in chess so this was a uh, sort of a retrospective study uh, where they followed up a group of patient and compared to the historic cohorts and as you see the treatment group the mortality was significantly less as compared to the control group they had a very small group of patients 47 in each group and the mortality was 8.5% as compared to 40.4% in the control so this was a vitamin c group and this was a control group so there was a significant reduction in mortality and even here they looked at the time for vasopressor discontinuation and as you see the duration of vasopressor in vitamin c group was significantly less at 18.3 hours as compared to 54.9 hours in the uh, treatment in the control group and they looked at sofa score reduction and there was significant sofa score reduction and the procalcitonin also more significantly reduced in the vitamin c group as compared to the control group and they also showed that in patients who received vitamin c 33% had a reduction in the need for hemodialysis uh, was the need for hemodialysis was reduced by 33% in vitamin c group as compared to the control group where it was 10% so all in all this was a very hugely positive study where it showed mortality benefit the need for vasopressor was came down sofa score came down procal so this sort of created a sensation amongst the intensivist group um, and that is where the whole enthusiasm of using vitamin c came about then the subsequent trials came 
which possibly refutes this. And this was very popularly known as Marik cocktail, uh, which was popularly uh, using this vitamin C at this dose, 1.5 grams, 6 hourly. Um, so, uh, hydrocarbon, so which would, in a, in a 60 kg person, uh, so it would come to around 12 grams and hydrocortisone and thiamine at this dose. So then came this Fowler et al. study. Uh, this came in 2019 in JAMA. So here they used vitamin C in patients with sepsis who already developed ARDS. So this was a very sub specific subgroup of patients of sepsis who developed ARDS and, uh, who, and, and, and they looked at uh, whether it had any effect on the organ failure or whether it had any effect on the biomarkers. Here they looked at uh, biomarkers, CRP they looked at. Then they looked at thrombomodulin, which is a biomarker of uh, DIC or pyoglopathy. So this was a double-blind, multicentric, randomized control trial done between September 14 to November 2017 in seven ICUs. So 167 patients were enrolled within 24 hours. And vitamin C, if you just see, the listener should pay attention to the dose they used. So here the dose they used was much, much higher. So they used 50 milligram per kg, six hourly. So which almost comes to you know, uh, 24 grams of that nature so for 96 hours they used. So, uh, and they measured the SOFA score. So they looked at change in SOFA from baseline to 96 hours. And they looked at CRP levels and thrombomodulin. CRP is an inflammatory marker. Thrombomodulin is a marker for uh, vascular coagulopathy or DIC. They looked at zero, 48 hours, 96 hours, and 168 hours. So the results mean age was 54.8, 54% were males. So they had 84 in the vitamin C group and 83 patients in the placebo group. And they looked at vitamin C levels. They did the serum vitamin C levels. As you see, in the group which got this 50 milligram per kg of vitamin C, uh, they had a high levels of vitamin C up to 96 hours. And they looked at change in SOFA score, which was the primary outcome. And they saw that uh, there was no statistically significant change in the SOFA score in the vitamin C group as compared to the placebo. They looked at CRP level, there was no difference. They looked at thrombomodulin levels also, there was no difference. So it was basically a negative study where it was a big study, robust study, where they used a little much higher dose of uh, vitamin C at 50 milligram per kg, but still they did not find any sort of a favorable effect in the primary outcome measures they had. But what they interestingly found was they did a secondary analysis in 46 patients where they had a mortality benefit in vitamin C study. And the ICO free days also was uh, showed a favorable benefit. And hospital free days also at day 60, they had a favorable effect in vitamin C. So increase in ICO free days, increase in hospital free days is a good sign. And they found this in vitamin C. So the secondary endpoints, when they did secondary analysis, looking at mortality in 46 patients, so they had a favorable benefit in vitamin C. So this was the striking finding in this Fowler study. But there were a lot of limitations in this uh, study because uh, there was a delayed administration of vitamin C because the sepsis patients were not immediately enrolled because they had to wait until they developed sort of a ARDS. So there was a delayed administration of vitamin C. And the study was underpowered for changes in SOFA and biomarkers. And mortality was not looked at as primary endpoint. And death and ICU length of stay were dissimilar, which shows internal selection bias. And mortality, the patients who died were not included in the analysis of SOFA chain. So the authors argued had, had they taken these patients, possibly uh, the change in the SOFA score, which was the primary endpoint, would have possibly attained statistical significance. So this is also one of the limitations. So the conclusions the authors made was in patients with sepsis who develop ARDS, vitamin C had no effect on improving organ failure or no effect on decreasing the biomarkers of inflammation and the coagulopathy. So it, it was all in all, the primary endpoints were all negative, but the secondary endpoints when they looked at, there was a change, uh, mortality benefit was there, and ICU free days and uh, hospital free days were uh, more, which was good. You know? That was the secondary endpoint. After this, then this came meta-analysis by Chinese, uh, which was uh, which basically this meta-analysis compared three different dosage regimes. Okay, so they, they took 12 trials and they analyzed 1,210 patients. So there was one group which was 3 to 10 grams per day. There was another group which got less than 3 grams per day. And uh, uh, so there was this other group which got more than 10 grams. So if you look at Merrick's, 
which became popular we tends to use uh, 6 grams per day uh, basically so here you, you you see this is the dose where they found a good mortality benefit and that was statistically significant but when you gave a less dose of less than 3 grams so it did not attain statistical significance if you give much higher dose like fowler use again they did not find statistical significance basically goes on to show 3 to 10 grams per day appear to be ideal dose when you have to subscribe to this meta analysis so this was the uh, studies in the meta analysis then there came this other meta analysis from chinese group again we showed basically if you look at this meta analysis they have taken all the positive studies so merix was positive fowler's was positive zabets was positive that was the iranian study so obviously there was a mortality benefit and if you have to subscribe to this where they have eliminated other negative studies so there was statistical significance in reducing the vasopressor use all as well so but we cannot obviously give a lot of merit to this because they have taken only positive studies so the, so all these studies were discussed in my previous videos also but right now we need to look at the studies which has basically put a large nail on the coffin for this vitamin c and that comes from four good studies randomized controlled trials so this came in 2020 which is the vitamins randomized controlled trial this came from australia came in jama so here they compared the typical combination vitamin c thiamine and hydrocortisone versus hydrocortisone group and this because they took patients only with septic shock so they had this hydro so the placebo group received this hydrocortisone so this was given within 20, 12 hours of randomization until vasopressors were discontinued so they continued this regime until the vasopressors were stopped the median duration of administration of this uh, cocktail is was 3.4 days so the primary endpoint was to look at the time that the patients were alive until day seven and the vasopressor three days duration until day seven. So this was the primary endpoint. So they had 109 in the vitamin C, 107 in hydrocortisone. So when you look at the primary outcome or the primary outcome they looked at is the time for vasopressor three days or time they were alive until day seven. There was no difference between vitamin C. When they looked at 90-day mortality, there was no difference between the vitamin C group and the control group. And the limitations of this was open-label design, so which means they were not blinded. Okay, so the vitamin trial was a negative trial which said vitamin C is of no benefit. Then this ACTS randomized control trial came. This also came from US group in JAMA 2020. Again, they used the same cocktail, but with a lesser time in 100 MD they used. They used for four days and they compared with placebo. Primary outcome was to look at change in SOFA, like how Fowler's study did. They looked at change in SOFA 0 to 72. And secondary outcome, they looked at patients developing AKI and 30 day mortality. 205 patients, 103 in vitamin C group, 102 in placebo. So the primary outcome, which is change in SOFA, there was no difference between vitamin C and thiamine. AKI also, there was no difference between vitamin C and placebo group. 30 day mortality also, there was no difference. Again, a negative trial. But what they should, they looked at the side effects. So hyperglycemia was more in vitamin C, hypernatremia was little more, and hospital acquired infections was a little more, although none of them attained statistical significance. Basically, ACTS trial, which is also a reasonably good study, showed that vitamin C had no benefit in any of the outcome indices. Then this Oranges trial, this also came in 2020 in chest. This also came from the US group. Here again, they used the same combination compared with placebo. Primary endpoint, again, like Fowler study, they looked at change in SOFA and resolution of shock. Secondary endpoint, they looked at ICU, 28 day mortality, hospital mortality, hospital length of stay, ICU length of stay, ventilatory free days, and they even looked at procalcitonin levels. But interestingly, this Orange's trial, 137 patients, 68 in vitamin C and 69 in placebo, the duration of vasopressors showed a positive outcome. It means the, patient, the group which got vitamin C had a lesser duration of vasopressor use as compared to the placebo, which other studies did not show. And the change in SOFA, which was the primary outcome, there was no difference between vitamin C and the control group. And secondary outcomes, which is all this mortality, uh, ICU, hospital mortality, length of stay, there was no difference between vitamin C and placebo group. So the uh, so we saw the AX trial, we saw the vitamin trial, which are negative. The oranges is almost negative, except that vasopressor duration was less in vitamin C group. Then this Victus trial came. This again came from the US group. This is the most latest, 2021. Again, they used the same combination compared with placebo for four days. Primary outcome was to look at ventilatory three days, vasopressor three days. Secondary outcome was to look at 30 day mortality. Much bigger study because they had 501 patients, like the Fowler study. 
252 in vitamin C group, 249 placebo. Primary endpoint, which is the ventilatory free days vasopressor, no difference between vitamin C and placebo group. 30 day mortality also, there was no difference. And the trial, in fact, was terminated early because of some logistic reasons. So these four trials, Oranges, Vitamins, Victors, and Axe trial, all four trials were negative, except that Oranges trial showed that there was reduction in the duration of vasopressors in the vitamin C group. So we did a study in our own ICU where we used vitamin C plus thiamine in sepsis and septic shock. We did from January, uh, over one year, we did this study. We took 86 patients uh, who had sepsis and septic shocks. Patients with sepsis got vitamin C plus thiamine and patient with septic shock, we gave hydrocortisone. We didn't give hydrocortisone for patients with sepsis. Like following the evidence base, we only gave it in patients who there only had shock. Hydrocortisone was used as an infusion for 24 hours. So this was our data. So the baseline characteristics were well met. As you see, this is the treatment group. This was the control group. All were well met, except the hypertensive patients were more in the vitamin C group. The median Apache between the treatment group and the control group, there was no difference, which is they were all baseline characteristics were well matched. When we look at the results, we had 86, 42 we had in the vitamin C and thiamine group, 44 in the control group, and mortality, we saw no difference, keeping with all the recent studies. Mechanical ventilator, three days, uh, there was no difference between the vitamin C and control group. But vasopressor, three days, there was no difference between vitamin C and thiamine. But ICU length of stay we saw, in fact, was more in vitamin C plus thiamine as compared to the control. We don't know the exact reason for that. Hospital length of stay also, there was no difference. So when we look into our own data, so this was the findings in our patients that we did not see any difference uh, between vitamin C and the control group in a study done in our, which we are in the process of publication. Uh, so the take-home message in septic patients, sepsis or septic shock, we understand that vitamin C levels are depleted, thiamine levels are depleted, which explains many abnormality in sepsis. So they were earlier, it all started with four randomized control trial. We showed some benefit with no toxicity and two meta-analysis, we showed mortality. So these were all in 2016 to 18 and maybe 19. Then the CITRI ALI study came by the Fowler et al. We showed secondary outcomes. There were signals we showed that it had mortality benefit. Um, but there were limitations that deaths were eliminated from SOAP analysis. But all these new trials which came in 2020 and 21, ACTS, Victors, Oranges, Vitamins, and our own uh, hospital study shows there is no benefit with vitamin C. So the bottom line remains in the light of the new evidence that has evolved from all these four big trials and our own study, uh, it has failed to convince us that vitamin C uh, has any merit in saving lives or uh, reducing the length of stay, reducing the hospital length of stay. Maybe it may have some remote benefit in reducing your vascular leakage if you have to subscribe to the uh, hypothesis that it maintains vascular integrity. And that may be the reason why it may have some vasopressor sparing effect. So we are in fact planning to do a study um, in fluids, whether the fluid resuscitation, uh, whether the patients with vitamin C would need lesser fluid as compared to the control. So we are embarking on doing that study to see uh, whether that could be related to maintaining good vascular endoth endothelial integrity. So many of you know that I'm a medical philatelist. So there are stamps released uh, commemorating the people who are behind this vitamin C discovery. So many of you know uh, James Link was the first one uh, who came out with treatment for scurvy in 1753. And uh, he gave oranges to all the sailors, and it was and it was called at uh, Scorbuti. And uh, there were two people who got Nobel Prize for discovering vitamin C. One of them is Sir Walter Haver. He got the 1937 Nobel Prize for chemistry uh, for uh, elucidating the structure of vitamin C. Uh, so this is a stamp issued by Great Britain in 1977. So Sir Walter Haver is sort of commemorated on this stamp um, for elucidating the chemical structure of the vitamin C. But the person who got Nobel Prize for discovering vitamin C and who got Nobel Prize for medicine is this Hungarian uh, scientist, Albert Zent Jorgai. So this was a stamp issued by Hungary in 1988. Uh, so basically what he showed was there was this uh, molecule that he isolated, which was released from adrenal cortex. And he found this molecule was interesting in that it it released hydrogen ion, it gave hydrogen ion, and then it regains the hydrogen ion. 
and it has five carbon atoms and uh, atoms and it uh, typically showed characteristics of acid and sugar so that is where uh, he found interest in this molecule because it had characteristic of both sugar and acid he called it as hexuronic acid and uh, once this was identified as a vitamin c active component so this uh, vitamin c was extracted in large quantity from paprika or capsicum uh, as in the mass production so and he got 1937 nobel prize for medicine so that's the historical bit for you behind the vitamin c discovery so thank you everyone so end with this beautiful quote so there was confusion with regards to vitamin c for many of the puritans whether it could be of help but right now with all the new studies i think we have put a large nail on the coffin that possibly it may not be of much help uh, so we need possibly more studies to see whether it has any benefit in maintaining vascular endothelial integrity that is where the area of interest may be especially in viral sepsis so thank you one and all